Lawyers of Reddit, what are some interesting laws loopholes? As a lawyer I'm going to give a serious answer, which may not be super interesting to the layman, but is an example of a true loophole. In Australia, as in most developed countries, we have a set of laws designed to stop company management from improperly fleecing the creditors of limited liability companies. So, for instance, if your company is going down the tubes and so you decide to simply transfer all of the company's assets to yourself, or if you keep running up debts you could not possibly pay, then you can be held liable. In order to be held liable for the above, the company's liquidator needs to be able to prove that the company was insolvent at the time you engaged in the improper conduct, which necessarily requires analyzing the company's financial records. If the company never kept financial records, which is itself a breach of the law, then insolvency is presumed, to avoid company directors being able to avoid liability in that way. And now for the loophole. The above presumption only applies if your company did not keep or retain financial records. However, the instant your company is in liquidation, the equivalent of bankruptcy in the USA, a company director ceases to be an agent of the company, so if they take the company's books and destroy them, then the presumption of insolvency does not apply, since it was not the company that destroyed them. You can be prosecuted for the destruction of the company's books, but it's basically a slap on the wrist fine in practice. So long as you can live with that, it means you can get away with virtually any unlawful conduct you engaged in while running the company. The above may not be something that pops up every day, and it may not make for great party conversation, but it is a rather gaping loophole that makes a huge difference to a director's responsibility in Australia. Posting a sign saying you aren't responsible doesn't necessarily make you not responsible. For example, say a Dricklianing shop posts, not responsible for lost or damaged clothing. My favorite are the gravel trucks that have a sign on the back stating stay back 200 feet, not responsible for broken windows. How many people actually believe that? In Michigan, if a Susbian secures a judgment for money damages, these are the rules on what B can keep. All family pictures, all arms and accoutrements required by law to be kept by any person, all wearing apparel of every person or family, and provisions and fuel for comfortable subsistence of each householder and his or her family for six months. B. All household goods, furniture, utensils, books, and appliances, not exceeding in value $1,000. C. A seat, pew, or slip occupied by the judgment debtor or the judgment debtor's family in any house or place of public worship, and all cemeteries, tombs, and rites of burial while in use as repositories of the dead of the judgment debtor's family or kept for burial of the judgment debtor. D. To each householder, 10 sheep, 2 cows, 5 swine, 100 hens, 5 roosters, and a sufficient quantity of hay and grain, growing or otherwise, for properly keeping the animals and poultry for 6 months. E. The tools, implements, materials, stock, apparatus, team, vehicle, motor vehicle, horses, harness, or other things to enable a person to carry on the profession, trade, occupation, or business in which the person is principally engaged, not exceeding in value $1000. In Texas you could keep your house in bankruptcy, no matter the value, then one of the Enron guys claimed the homestead exemption on a 15 million dollar house, the feds made them change the law after that. In Oklahoma, if you are an adopted child, you will be considered an heir of both your adoptive parents and your biological parents after their death. Double inheritance. In South Dakota, if you ride a horse to school and the temperature is below a certain point, the school is forced to house and feed it. False, there are neither schools or horses in either of the Dakotas. Under the Sexual Offences Act 2003 in the UK it's illegal to have sex with a live animal or to have sex with a dead human. An odd loophole to this wording is that there is therefore no law against having sex with a dead animal. It's also interesting to note that despite this, under the Criminal Justice and Immigration Act 2008, it is illegal to possess an image of someone having sex with an animal, dead or alive. Officer, I swear that gerbil was dead before I stuck it in my rectum. I regularly tell people there is no magic number on a DUI charge. While there is a legal DUI limit to 8 in the states, 
above which you are automatically considered impaired so long as the reading is considered valid and admissible. Most states have laws which allow any amount of alcohol in your system to qualify for the charge if the state can show the amount, no matter how low, sufficiently impaired your ability to operate the vehicle. Here we have DUI, driving under the influence, and DWI, driving while intoxicated, as, basically, separate laws. The first requires a 08, the second requires a showing you were intoxicated to a point your ability was sufficiently lessened. Fun fact to throw out at the local bar when someone starts talking about how they had three beers and are below the legal limit, and therefore won't get a DUI as a result. I work at a petrol station in the UK. If you fill up your car and walk into the shop without a suitable means of pay, forgot your cash, card doesn't work, we will give you an IOU form and you are not legally required to come back and pay the balance. We can send you a maximum of 3 letters and that's it. It would cost us more for court cost CTC to get the cash off you. Sorry I ain't pertaining to ARP's lawyer answers but I thought you would find this useful. I read in a book once, that there is an outdated law in Alberta that hasn't been changed. This was a few years back though, that if you are released from jail you can demand a loaded gun and a horse to ride out of town. Anybody know what happened to this one? Ian or, but my boss home brews beer, and he found out that in Texas, if you brew the beer yourself you can legally consume it even if you are underage. You can even buy all the needed equipment while underage too. Comma Ian or, but my boss home brews beer, with a beginning like that, this comment could not possibly be bad. A major problem with EULAs, if I'm installing software for a client, and I click the agree on the software, what does that mean? I don't have power of attorney for any of my customers. Consider all the software that computer manufacturers and resellers and technical people install, and click OK on the EULA, without true legally binding representation. What, then? Ro, I can finally legally make nuclear weapons with my iTunes copy. Thank you. It's okay to dump DMSO down the drain in our lab as long as you dilute it with water because the law says it has to be under a certain concentration to dump. But you're still dumping the same amount of DMSO. It's just not as concentrated. Dilution is the solution to pollution. Not nearly as effective with chloroform though. Exceeding the posted speed limit in Texas, and a few other states, is not technically a crime. It's just really really good evidence that you were speeding. It falls under the umbrella of prima facie law, which means on the face of things. Speeding is loosely defined as driving too fast for the given conditions. So if you are going over the posted speed limit but driving safely according to a set of standards and conditions, you are not speeding. Good luck convincing a judge though lol. In Canada it is legal to pirate movies games music apps as long as you don't make a profit from it. So if any Canadians here get a letter from their ISP telling them to stop, just ignore it. They can't do anything in court. We ignore it here in the US too. Lawyer here. If you set off the alarm walking out of a retail store, just keep walking. The store personnel has no right to detain you unless they have an actual basis for doing so. For example, someone saw you taking stuff off the rack and putting it into your bag. Absent such cause, touching you could be civil battery, false imprisonment, and a host of other things. Have them call the cops, they'll say the same thing. HM, OK, 544, B of the bankruptcy code allows the trustee, basically a person appointed to look out for creditors, in a bankruptcy case to assert the rights that actual creditors could assert in order to bring property into the estate. For example, let's say that you regularly lend money to a dry goods store. In return, you take a lien on their assets. One day, you walk towards the dry goods store, and you are happy. The sun is shining, and bluebirds are chirping in the branches of joyous trees. But when you enter the store, your face falls. The inventory is there, but the owner is nowhere to be seen. You speak with the man behind the counter, and he tells you that the old owner sold him the store, and its inventory, lock, stock, and barrel. He has skipped town. Later on, you learn that he has filed for bankruptcy, and, naturally, you would like to get your money back. So, you'd like to slap a lien on the inventory of the store, and then sell it off and get your cheddar. You can do this under non-bankruptcy law, 
because you are in a jurisdiction where the applicable bulk sale laws state that the seller's obligations to you follow the inventory he has sold. You are happy to learn that 544 B of the bankruptcy code allows the trustee in bankruptcy to assert the same right to the goods. The other creditors are overjoyed to learn that they have received a windfall. As it turns out, the goods have appreciated in value, such that they were worth substantially more than your loan. However, due to a Supreme Court case called Moore v. Bay, the balance of the loan will be split with the other creditors proportionately, even though, under non-bankruptcy law, only you could assert a claim against the goods, and you'd only receive compensation to the extent of your interest. The other creditors are actually ecstatic to hear about you, because they realize that that person you made a loan to was actually a corporation. Recently, this corporation reorganized using a leveraged buyout. Essentially, the corporation took out a loan from a bank, and used the proceeds to buy its own stock. Because this was a transfer not for reasonable value, and because it rendered the company insolvent, this was a fraudulent conveyance that can be avoided under the Bankruptcy Code Section 548. Because the trustee can use you to assert this claim under 544, b. The other creditors can now collect the amount of the transfer from the bank, neatly sidestepping the problem of trying to collect from an insolvent debtor, and all because you decided to loan out some dough for dry goods. You had me up until the second sentence. My lawyer wife told me once that there is no way to undeclare anyone undead. Once a doctor declares someone dead, there is no way to fix it. Well I think I just found a way out of my student loans. If you live in an oil producing state, odds are you don't own the rights to the oil under your land. However, the person who does own the oil rights is fully entitled to come on your land, set up a drilling rig, lay pipelines, install storage tanks, build a frack water pond, and do basically anything needed to get the oil out of the ground. They don't need your permission to do this, it is not trespassing, and there is virtually nothing you can do to stop them. Oil and gas lawyer. You can legally marry your first cousin in ILF1, either party is over the age of 55 and 2, they are sterile with a doctor's note stating such. You can marry your first cousin in Australia, no questions asked, Lawyer here, most people don't know this, but if you have enough money and are white enough, I can get you off of pretty much anything. When you gotta go, you gotta go has some legal precedents. I don't remember the name of the case, but a woman ignored a keep out sign for an outhouse. She used it anyway, fell through some rotting wood into the hole of crap below, and successfully sued, arguing that her pressing need and lack of other facilities left her no choice but to use the outhouse despite the sign. Edit. Source. Lectures on tort law from the teaching company. Downloading CP and possessing CP is illegal, viewing it is not. Possessing drugs is illegal, being on drugs is not. Cops are never obligated to tell you the truth. In fact, lying is a potent law enforcement tool. If your keys are readily accessible to you, you can get a DUI even if the car is off and you are asleep. Go throw them in some bushes or stick them in the trunk. You can sign for someone else's credit card if you have permission, but use your name so it won't look like fraud. Banks can cash post dated checks whenever they want. Possessing drugs is illegal, being on drugs is not. Not true everywhere. For example, check the Michigan state law for use of marijuana. This is not intended as legal advice, etc. I've always been a little troubled by location-based federal jurisdiction over state crimes. That is, any ordinary state level crime, for example, DUI, assault, indecent exposure, whatever can be prosecuted at the federal level if the crime is committed on federal property, national park, federal highway, airplane, etc. This could mean big differences in charges, misdemeanors versus felonies, and sentencing conditions, including term, parole eligibility, federal versus state prison, etc. Even if you're only a few feet over the property line, the line must be drawn here, this far, no farther. A virgin will take it up her butt and still remain pure for her husband, see, goop hole loophole, Enal, and can attest to this fact. I am not a lawyer, however. So there is this thing called jury nullification. I'm sure you've never heard of it on Reddit before. If HR your persuasion, 
A neat trick to see if said H is a cop is to start with paid nude modeling. A H will always do it because it's easy money. A cop will turn you down because it wastes their time. Make sure they are clear at the beginning that you are only interested in nude modeling. Don't suggest that anything else might be of interest. Once nudes are procured, it should be safe to move on to other stuff. You can shoplift as long as the people working there can't speak English well enough to call the cops. Note, only applicable in countries where cops speak English. I'm not a lawyer but a paralegal in various capacities. You can pretty much claim anything as a work-related injury. If you get carpal tunnel for example, you can also say that your carpal tunnel causes you depression, anxiety and insomnia. If they're not disputing the carpal tunnel, they probably won't dispute anything else you add on. If they want to dispute it, they will have to pay for the doctor to prove you don't have depression, anxiety, insomnia and they would rather just give you the money as part of your settlement. Also, wills and trusts are pretty fun. You can pretty much do whatever you want. It's like creating a little fantasy world for after you die and everyone will be obligated to honor your wishes the best they can. You can't arrest a husband and wife for the same crime. You have the worst freaking attorneys. The consumer grade license agreements are really about protecting the company from class action lawsuits. That is, they are not designed to ever go after the consumer, but to protect from the consumer. When you pay to park somewhere, and they hand you that ticket that says they are not responsible for any damage to your car. That's bulls. They absolutely are and they just want to scare you off. They took a bailment on your car. That sucks. I got my car stolen at a museum where I paid to park once. I threw a fit, called the police and security and said that there wasn't anything I could do and there wasn't anything they could do beside report it. I asked if they would at least refund my admission fee but the museum refused. My brother, a lawyer, told me that you can only be charged with mayhem if your victim loses a body part. At one point, it was almost impossible to get no fool to divorce, in Canada. A divorce based on adultery is still quicker. As a result, a married couple would work together so that one of them would be caught having an affair. We'll be in this hotel room tomorrow night. Feel free to barge in. You'll even see people filing affidavits admitting that they'd banged their tennis pro. In Utah you can carry a pistol with you without getting a permit as long as you have no rounds in the chamber. Any act followed by a verbal or written no homo comment is deemed to be true a priori. However, if ball sacks touch during the prior act, no homo cannot be used to invalidate said action. S. Also, regardless of no homo one must completely understand that it's not gay if it's a three way. A large amount of people seem unaware of the felony murder rule. In almost every state, if you are committing a felony and somebody dies as a result of your felonious actions, you can, and quite likely will, be charged with murder. Example. Three accomplices of yours intend to rob your neighborhood drug dealer. Your role is limited to dropping them off at the guy's house and picking them up later a few streets over. Your buddies assure you that nobody will get hurt and that they aren't even carrying weapons. While in there, one of your buddies freaks out and blows the guy's head off. Guess what pal? You are on the hook for murder. You would not believe the amount of people who have helped convict themselves of felony murder by telling the police some variation of I didn't kill the guy, but I know who did. Yasi, my boy Charles called me up. I get the sense that nearly all these responses are by non-lawyers just regurgitating some bulls they heard from their best friend's cousin's neighbor as posted on Facebook. While not really a loophole, checks are fun. You can do all sorts of crap with special endorsements. If wherever you write them is dumb enough to take them. I always like to write stupid crap on checks I'm cashing just to see if the tellers will take it raffle. They usually do. But every once in a while I get it sent back with a polite up. Yeah, I can't take that. A guy a while back won a case against Best Buy because they accepted a check that he had endorsed with conditions that essentially said if they mailed him any advertisements. Which, duh, of course they will. He can settle for something like $500 a pot lol. Held up in court. 2. Being rich is the best loophole ever. In Ohio, you may be convicted of drunk driving, OV, for operating a bicycle under the influence of alcohol, but not for riding a unicycle or tricycle in the same condition. ORC. 4511.01.
A. Also, if you are found either dead or unconscious behind the wheel, you will be found under the law to have implicitly given your consent to a back test. ORC. 4511.191. A. 4. This should be at the top of the page. You can never waive gross negligence. All those half retarded waivers you sign before going skiing or rock climbing or whatever are basically toilet paper. If you're seriously injured because they screwed up call Saul, you can rub their nose in the contract you wiped your butt with waving such a thing before your accident. For California residents, if you write a bad review of a business on Yelp or whatever and they sue you for defamation you can anti-slap. Anti-strategic lawsuit against public participation them. They must prove everything immediately without discovery. You should basically feel like Shelly finding the golden ticket because a good attorney will have you owning their business. They'll pay you, pay your attorney, and you can slap back by countersuing for things like emotional distress. Evil lawyer time. Emo distress is a countersuit because you know a jury listening to the way some company tried to shut you up and impede your free speech will punish the ever loving heck out of them in a verdict even if you're mentally okay. And honestly, a suit like that would seriously disrupt your life anyway so don't feel bad about going for the jugular. Law student not legal advice. Back in my days of habitually roaming the streets drunk off my butt, I was arrested under CA Penal Code 647, F, a couple times, the law against public drunkenness. Being the functional drunk that I was, I took the time to look into the law and learned that to be arrested under 647, F, requires more than just being intoxicated. It also specifies that you must be either unable to care for yourself or be blocking public access like a sidewalk or a freeway. They dropped my case both times before going too far, but I was prepared to go to court over it. Another one is Penal Code 314, the law against public nudity. This law specifically states that the nudity must be sexual in nature, so while the public may not like it, you can technically walk around butt naked as long as you aren't being sexual about it. I was arrested for 647F and 314 one night, and they sent my case to some youth diversion program. I went in and brought a folder full of relevant case law that strengthened the interpretation that nudity is legal as long as it's non-sexual, and presented it to this panel of community leaders, police officers and law students. Never forgot my closing line. So, as you can see mom, while the display of my anus may be juvenile and crass, I'm clearly not guilty of the offense outlined under 314 PC. They told me that this wasn't a court and therefore case law was irrelevant. The fact that the community members could be offended made me guilty. I told them that was a perversion of justice and to send the case to trial. Never heard back. Most likely because it wouldn't be worth anyone's time to try and prosecute rather than because of my half acid lawyer skills. If you're poor, then you automatically lose. If you are new to the channel, you can subscribe. I publish new videos every day. Until then, check another video. Bye for now.